I'm sure you've worked this out at this point, but I really love RPG Maker games. I mean, I've made a few videos on them already. I mean, there's uh, Omori, some others. Maybe I just made the one video. I do really like them. That's the truth. Believe me. Okay. There's something about them. It might have to do with how every time you think you know what to expect, but every game takes the tropes of the maker and completely flips it on its head, giving you a game unlike you've, anything you've played before. A lot of these games are made by small groups or even one person, so when they tell stories, they're so much more compelling and feel more personal. Think of games like Amori or Yume Niki, there's a few others I'm probably forgetting that I'm definitely forgetting. I recently played a series of RPG Maker games, and they were incredible. It was a trilogy of games, and the name of this trilogy is Hello Charlotte. This game was so much fun. I've been working on this video for way too long because I really wanted to give this series the time and effort it deserved. So that's why this video has taken so long to finish. I've also had a bunch of other things. I'm not gonna go into that. It's not important. That's not what matters. What matters is Hello Charlotte. Hello Charlotte is split into three episodes. Hello Charlotte episode one, episode two, and episode three, Childhood's End. There is also a spin-off game, which I haven't played yet. I might play it, we will see. I'll let you know if I end up playing it, and then I could probably talk about that later. But these three main games tell the story of a girl named Charlotte. Shocking, never would have guessed that. And throughout the game, we learn more about her and what she's been through and, you know, all sorts of crazy things. You're gonna have to watch the video or play the game to find out what happens. So let's start with Hello Charlotte, episode one. Hello Charlotte episode 1 opens with Charlotte. We learn this is a girl who lives alone in her house. You complete simple tasks like order your own food. You receive this task from a note from Charlotte's mother that Charlotte says has been there for years. So, you know, absent mother, great start, love that. Charlotte may be alone, but she's not fully alone in this house. There are tenants. If the tenants are real or not is not super clear to begin with. Are they actually people living with her? Or is the dear man with antlers a figment of her imagination, just like my delusions of happiness? So after greeting the residents, she is tasked with looking after Dr. Huxley's nephew Felix. There is a lot of characters that are introduced. I'm not going to go through and talk about them all right now. I'm going to talk about them as they become relevant to the story. In the first game, you just need to know there are a bunch of residents. They have their... they're not super clear what they're about and what their objectives are we learn a lot more about them in the in the coming games so i'm just gonna leave that for them remember them they are important so after walking around the house with felix for like a few minutes charlotte decides it's bedtime and heads off to sleep i don't know where felix sleeps charlotte has like one bed so maybe felix just like stands there anyway charlotte wakes up and felix is no longer around she looks around the house for him and finds a giant distorted TV in one of the rooms. So of course, like any normal person, she decides to enter the TV. Like everyone would do if they found a giant distorted TV. I would do the same. You know, just like Persona 4. You know, where they go on the TVs and there's another world on the other side. That's what happens here. And just like Persona 4, on the other side she finds a bear. But unlike Persona 4, it's not a twink hiding in a bear costume, it's just a bear that rips out her guts if she touches it or it catches her. Good fun. Maybe this was actually inspired by Persona 4. Don't know, don't have any evidence to prove that, that's just a theory. Uh, not gonna say that. Charlotte travels between channels with Felix, and each world is empty. There's an abandoned library, and towards the end you make it to the world of the oracles. The world that Felix has been looking for this entire time. However, all the oracles are long dead at this point, and the only people left are the executioners who try to kill you. Towards the end, in one of the rooms of the oracle, towards the end in one of the rooms of the oracle world, you see a peculiar picture. Now, what this painting is, I'm 
not going to explain right now, but it is very important. So I'm going to throw it up on the screen, take a look at this, burn it into your memory. It's going to come back later. It's important. Remember it. After meeting the last oracle, they tell you how every channel you visited is actually long dead world, saved as channels merely to be viewed by us. The oracles were killed by this god at the center of all worlds because the god consumed everyone's ego and caused them all to become one. Everyone that didn't give up their individuality, they were killed. The game then gives you the illusion of choice, you can either save the god or not, but actually you have to save the god, you cannot leave it to die. Trust me, I tried, Charlotte just does not listen to what you have to say. Charlotte makes a wish to save the god. This again is incredibly important for later, a lot of seeds being planted in this first game. What's going on? What's all this about? L lot of questions not many answers. Charlotte takes the oracle into her body and destroys every other world. We then cut to Charlotte and the Umbrella Man on the couch talking about her adventures. No idea how they made it back, no idea what happened, don't know where Felix is, hopefully he's okay, don't know. She mentions how he takes her father's face but she's okay with that. He then tells her to take her pills called Abilify, Abilify? Abilify, which Curiously, is a real drug that helps treat several kinds of mental health conditions, including schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, autism spectrum disorder, and Tourette syndrome. And actually, as I write this, I realized exactly how this ties into the story. So yes, this is important. After taking these pills, Charlotte's house starts to look like a normal house, and off to bed she goes. No idea, no tenants around. The mag cat, which I actually didn't mention earlier, which was, it, it's, a, it's a maggot that looks like a cat. It's a maggot and a cat together is now just a normal cat, but it's still called mag cat. And off she goes to bed after walking around this normal looking house. Good night, Charlotte. And that's how episode one ends. Look, I'm sure you have a lot of questions. Like, what the fuck was that? Was that all a dream? What was the point? And yes, we will get there eventually. We have so much to go so far. This is just the beginning. This is the tip of the Hello Charlotte iceberg. It's, we gotta keep going, we gotta get deeper. And I can tell you, heads up, it's gonna get a lot worse from here. This is just the beginning. Hello Charlotte episode two is probably my favorite of the three. Not because it answers any questions I have about the story, not because it introduces revolutionary combat, but because it goes balls to the wall insane. And you go from thinking that maybe this is a simple story about a girl struggling to grasp reality and deal with the pressures in her life to absolute insanity. So enough of, my, uh, enough of me hyping it up, let's break down what happens in Hello Shell episode two. Episode 2 starts very similar to the first, with Charlotte in her room. She then decides to greet the tenants. Some time seems to have passed at this point, and possibly Charlotte moved house because the rooms have rearranged. Or maybe they did just magically rearranged. I mean, I've seen stranger things. At this point, after the first game, Charlotte is now living with the oracle inside her head. An interesting idea is how Felix mentions the oracle being nothing more than a rotting corpse inside her head. Curiously, Felix also mentions how when they left the TV world, Charlotte rotted away and her body became a corpse. This was until the Oracle reformed her. So strangely, Charlotte might have died after episode 1, but why? No idea. The second episode also expands a lot on the side characters. The first game only really talked about Felix. Felix was the no-nonsense scientist nephew who was trying to find out what happened to the world of the oracles. But now we get the introduction of characters like Bennett, who is my favorite, and gets even better as the games go on. He is not a bad guy, I swear. Anything he does later, um, I can't, you just have to see for yourself and judge. I mean, I, I don't know if I can defend his actions. Bennett is an alien from another planet. On this world, there are two kinds of people, humans and overmen. Overmen are basically slaves that are used as test subjects, kind of like um, animal testing in our real world. That's the best way you can describe this. Bennett was an underman who was tested on until he developed a rare disease that causes eyes to grow all over one's body and their internal organs, eventually killing them. 
which is the most fucked up disease I have ever heard. That is fucking insane. Imagine having like your liver covered in eyeballs. Like what the fuck does- that's fucked up. I hate that. I also really love that. He then met Dr. Huxley, who promised to cure him. After working for months on it, he decides to get Bennett off the planet, while also telling him he already had a cure. The real reason he studied Bennett was to see the difference between humans and undermen. To see the real difference between humans and overmen. What he learns is there is actually no difference between the two. So he runs away with Bennett and they eventually make it to Charlotte's house where they stayed ever since. And he's just great. I love that guy. Nothing bad is gonna happen. After greeting everyone in the start of episode 2, Charlotte heads off to school. On the walk she finds some kids bullying a boy and decides to intervene. She stops them with pepper spray, which she got earlier, I forgot to mention she picked up pepper spray, sprays kids on the way to school, and runs away with the boy. He introduces himself as C, and Charlotte takes him to the nurse's office. C also claims to be the god of this world, which I mean is just a little insane, right? I mean there's no way he could actually be god. After dropping C off, Charlotte heads to off to class. Charlotte has a friend in class called Henry. She says hello to Charlotte and then after class immediately asks her to go buy them lunch. So Charlotte heads to the canteen and of course it immediately all goes to shit. The head of the student council decides to leave the story before even being introduced by jumping off the roof of the school ending her life. Of course this means Charlotte needs to head home early and this should absolutely not make Anri mad when we see her next. I hope. After falling asleep, she meets the oracle in her dreams. The oracle talks about human empathy and feeling sad about someone's death who you've never even spoken to before. Just normal conversations you have with the god in your head after you go to bed. The oracle then reads her bedtime story about the paper princess and the ink girl. This story is about how those two work together to create art for the world of paper, which is like what the paper princess runs. It's like in charge of, you know. But every time they do, the ink girl infects the paper princess until she is nothing but ink. The paper princess represents Charlotte. Surely. Right? Right? The oracle then addresses the player, or Seth, the name of the category of puppeteer. There are a few different, I'll explain them later. The oracle says something very interesting. They mention how you're not actually in control and wonder why you're even there. For answers maybe? Well, if that's the case, you won't be getting any because Charlotte is an unreliable narrator. And I mean, no shit she's unreliable. We knew this, right? After episode 1, we knew the world wasn't as it seemed, so of course Charlotte isn't to be trusted, but... I still trust her. She's the hero of this story. Surely she'll never betray the player. I forgot to mention how Charlotte is waking up every morning in coughing fits. She coughs up black ink everywhere, but promises it's not blood. But I mean, come on, miss. The unreliable narrator. I don't believe you. We also talk about an illness that Charlotte has. When her heart is wounded, the scars that her heart received appear on her arm. I mean, I think that illness is pretty self-explanatory. There are a lot of illnesses in Hello Charlotte. All of them represent different concepts, I'll get into them as I go on. After going to school, the teacher speaks backwards for so long, and I read it all, but I'm gonna be honest, none of it was important. So it was absolute waste of time, and I'm gonna cry about it. After this, you then have to explore the school, and we learn that Hello Charlotte Episode 2 has introduced a revolutionary new concept. Turn-based combat. This is absolutely unheard of in this game. I mean, it's okay. I don't think there's any reason to participate in the fight, so most of the time I just flee social interactions, which is the realest thing you can do in a game. I mean, she's just like me for real. I also flee every social interaction I'm presented with in life. After entering the change rooms, Charlotte is ripped apart by monsters, 
just like what happened to me last time I went to a change room. I don't try on clothes before I buy them anymore. My jumper is way too big for me. Fuck, now I have to retuck that in. God damn it. Man, I did it for the bit. Hold on. So after this, she coughs up ink again. It's fine. It's no, no problem. And finds herself in a mirror world. Now, I'm not even gonna lie. I am so dumb. The puzzles in this world were so hard, but I think I'm just dumb. They were actually the worst, but yeah, I was stumped. Great job. D really good job. Hello Charlotte is a game developed by Ethereum. Ethereum is incredibly talented. Go check out everything else they've done. I don't know if they've done much more, but um, absolutely so talented. This game is incredible. But these puzzles were so damn hard. I mean, congratulations, Ethereum. You fucking had me stumped. I was in here for hours. I could not do it. After completing these puzzles, we learn more about the Oracle and Charlotte. Also, some other characters. The Oracle has been speaking about the death of the individual, and the Oracle was the reason for all of the death in their original world by causing the death of the individual. I said the same thing twice, why did I write that? Which is why the executioners were wearing masks in the world where the oracle came from. The masks represent how they lost all their individuality. Is this also foreshadowing what's gonna happen in this current world? Maybe. We also learned that Charlotte used to be very different. She used to wear, you know, jumpers and had very short hair and it was actually Aiden or Krampus, as we learn, as in the Demon of Christmas, who we learn is actually Aiden, who convinced her to change her attitude, wear dresses, and grow her hair out. This is really interesting, but the strangest idea comes right after, when we learn that after leaving the TV world, Charlotte's body immediately started to rot away, flesh being stripped from her body, all the while Felix watched in horror, unable to even do anything. This explains why Felix has acted so distant to Charlotte throughout this second game. I bet you're wondering why I hadn't mentioned Felix. Felix just doesn't want to hang out with Charlotte anymore. Maybe because he literally watched her die, rot away, and then come back from the dead. I think if I saw that happen to someone, I'd cut them off. Is that toxic of me? Probably. But I mean, I wasn't the one that died and rotted away. They were. That's their problem, not mine. After this fun little venture to the mirror world, Charlotte is found passed out in the changing rooms and sent home early because clearly there is something wrong with her. Thus we end the day, that night the Umbrella Man visits her. Love this guy. They talk about a war between globalists and idealists as well as the death of ego, the outcome from a world without ego. The Umbrella Man asks what it must be like to have your thoughts slowly converge and meld with the entire world until there is no such thing as an individual. Really fun conversation all around, lots to think about, reminds me of the conversations I have with my friends late at night after a lot of drinks. After Umbrella Man leaves, Charlotte still can't catch a break and then visits Freya in her dreams, who is the Oracle. Forgot to mention, they have a name. Talk about the Paper Princess story, and Charlotte asks why the Paper Princess would let herself be infected by the ink, and Frey says, They did it for love, because to love someone, you must give up your ego to become one with that person. Listen, I'm dense, and kinda dumb, but maybe this game is trying to tell me something. After this, we finally go into day 25. Not gonna lie, when I played this, I didn't notice we skipped so many days and thought I had played all 25 days. I hadn't noticed at all. Day 25 is pretty full on. After the last few quiet days, we learn more about C, and I think he's a huge liar, but I'm not gonna tell you why yet. Just sit tight. He's on the roof and, and talking about how he wants to get rid of the, his human body, but it's too difficult to do when inside the house and the school grounds. I mean, I think you know what he's talking about, it's kind of tragic, it's very sad. He also talks about how his mother died after giving birth to him in another life, which is strange, to say the least, it's important. He also refuses to touch anything living in case it dies. Sure, that's fair. After this, I travelled out to the garden and something was different. Just before, but before that, I gotta be honest and say, I legit get jump scared every time a social interaction starts, and honestly, that's how I feel in real life whenever I get trapped in a social interaction. The sound that plays, terrifying.
but on a more depressing note, all the mag cats in the garden are dead. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this, but Charlotte was feeding the mag cats junk food. They were in the school garden. Now they're dead. Is it Charlotte's fault, or is there possibly something else going on? After this happens, Freya asks Charlotte if she's willing to give up her ego to become one with Freya. I really hope I'm pronouncing the name right. I'm probably not. Please correct me in the comments. Thank you. I'm terrible with names. After this happens, everything begins to spiral after control. The teacher tells the class the Mad Cats died of food poisoning. Charlotte struggles to cope with this realization and starts to lose it. The class calls her cat killer and laughs at her, you know, classic peer things, classic school things, we've all been there. She then spits up ink, which makes me think maybe it's vomit and not blood, but again, you can't really trust anything you've seen in this game. In the nurse's office, C says he's found a way out that no one knows about. He takes Charlotte to floor negative one of the school, which is no longer the school. I'm sure you've noticed, but this world is really weird. The layout doesn't make much sense. Everything's kind of on different levels, which is strange to say the least, especially when we find out what's below the school. Below the school is a post-apocalyptic world full of insects that sell things inside rundown buildings. If you were paying attention, we've already at We've actually already seen this before. In Hello Charlotte episode 1, a cockroach arrives to deliver the fast food. With this, I think we can assume this is how Charlotte sees the world around her. Everything that is not a part of her immediate world is run down and ruined. After visiting the shop, Charlotte wonders why the department store would be labelled religion. And the bug inside says how religion of the modern age is capitalism and banks are its churches. Which is the best thing I have ever heard in a game. I fucking love that. That is my favourite. It is so good. We also learn that there are three types of puppeteers. Adam, Eve, Seth and Lilith. Just a little fun fact for you. As we travel deeper into the, this world, we discover bodies hanging from trees, and the game chillingly tells us that this is a suicide spot, which is really great, and I love that. Charlotte wants to go back, but C says how the world she sees must be a colourful place, and to him it's bleak and very Silent Hill-esque. If you've played Silent Hill 2, the world looks different to each person. I don't know if that's what they were going for, but that's what it reminded me of. C tells Charlotte he wants to go back to heaven, and Charlotte is confused, so he holds out some pills. Yeah? Okay. This is a very heavy choice. You can choose to accept the pills from C or decline them. Taking C's hand, Charlotte and C take the pills and fall asleep. Later, two bodies would be found in the woods, two empty, soulless husks. They leave this world ascending into cruel gods, unaware of anything on the earthly realm. There's honestly this sweet artwork, and we get the text, happy end, ignorant bliss. I mean, they're right, ignorance is bliss. Not knowing what happens next, might be for the best. Refusing C, Charlotte asks him to live. While Freya tells her truths she doesn't want to hear, like how despite the self-harm, her dreams of gods in heaven and sac self-sacrifice, she's scared of the truth. After dying, there's nothing, and even her puppet Seth, the player, will leave. Cause why would they stick around when there's no more game to play? Freya says you should have let C die, which is an incredible conversation to have with a god in your head. Charlotte chokes Freya, which in return makes it hard for her to breathe. They then both get arrested and taken to the principal, who instead of helping these two who really need it, punishes them. Classic school system in action. What's mental illness? Never heard of her. That girl's just got bad behaviour. Well, no time to think about that. The trial is coming up. Gotta focus on that instead. The next day, there's no one in the house, so it's time to go to school. Anri is again asking for food, so Charlotte buys Anri some food, but then isn't left with any money for herself. Which is so sad, I'm sure Anri is a great friend. While having lunch, Anri brings up rumours about Charlotte and C, but she calls Charlotte Charlie and C Vincent. And I mean, come on, his name's C, how dumb are you? Doesn't even start with the same letter. She also tells Charlotte after she feels bad for killing the cats, and to tell herself that it isn't her fault. Not taking responsibility is a great coping mechanism. 
I want to emphasize how much she gets Charlotte to say it's not her fault. It might come up later, or maybe it won't. I know. A lot of seeds still being planted. Henry then asks Charlotte to vote for her in the trial. You then get the choice to agree or disagree. This choice doesn't really have much impact on what happens. However, I chose to agree and Henry then kisses Charlotte and tells her not to think so much. And while she's saying this, she's holding a box cutter for hopefully no reason at all. After returning to class, Charlotte finds a note on her desk from C, asking her to meet him on the roof. Class passes quickly and then Charlotte heads up to the roof and of course, it's not C. It's the bullies from the start of the game. If in a horrifying scene, they hold her down and cut off all her hair. Freya mentions how Charlotte's mother abandoned her and now she wants someone to save her, but doesn't feel worthy of being saved, which is the saddest thing ever. After this, Charlotte heads to the nurse's office. In the nurse's office, the Umbrella Man is looking kind of fine. Now I'm getting like Kenjaku from Jujutsu Kaisen latest chapter vibes from the Umbrella Man. Spoiler alert. Anyway, the Umbrella Man mentions something strange. The fog in Charlotte's mind has been lifted by Freya. So that might be why reality is seeping into this abstract dream world. For example, and recalling C. Vincent. Later, Charlotte gets a haircut from Aiden, and in the mirror she sees the corpse she burned in the first episode. Was it her this whole time? Did she kill herself in the first episode? Because I didn't mention this, but in the first episode, Charlotte kills a someone and then uses their corpse to get to the next room because the door is locked. That corpse looks exactly like Charlotte does right now. Maybe in the first game, Charlotte killed another version of herself, but why would there be multiple versions of Charlotte? Is there multiple versions of Charlotte? Am I just making shit up? Maybe. Time for day 32. Now, when this started, I really thought my game had broke, which was the best. Starting in Charlotte's room, you have to leave by talking to everyone without getting trapped in the room. After doing this incredibly strange but welcome puzzle, you head off to the trial. Now we get the choice to select one of three endings, black, white, and gray. And these are all super fun and not depressing at all. If you choose to vote for C, then Anri gets mad and no one votes for Charlotte. Anri calls her a traitor and a bad friend and a lunatic, which I think is a little harsh. Anri, just a little mean. This ending is incredibly sad to experience. There is no ending you could technically call a good ending per se. We find out that the class killed the cats, the class stole her books and cut her hair, and Anri was always a part of it. Charlotte enters the smile room and is strapped to a table. She then embraces Freya as he says she's about to become a corpse, and they fade away. Charlotte is the ink princess, the one that infects those paper people all around her. She says rejoice Seth, for this is her happy ending. Black end, everlasting oblivion. Voting for Anri causes C to be chosen to go to the spa room. Charlotte, feeling the guilt of causing this, rushes after him and, in set, and inside finds an empty husk of what used to be C or Vincent. She loses it and becomes one with the Oracle, becoming a god. She consumes the entire world, becoming alone and also one with everyone inside her at the same time. The Umbrella Man appears and speaks about how dramatic this ending is. Mentions how I thought I could time travel and change the ending, but in reality, I was just controlling a different Charlotte. And every ending is still happening in another world. Big uh, Legend of Zelda Oracle of Time vibes going on there, you know. It, the theory that every time you die in Oracle of Time, it splits off into another timeline. And when you reset, that timeline is still happening. So, don't die. I didn't mention, but all this time, the Umbrella Man has had a boss, a employer, as he says, that he has been working for this entire time and that's why he's been watching over Charlotte. So in this ending, Charlotte makes a deal with the Umbrella Man, or Charles as he likes to be called. He steals her name so no one will ever remember God Charlotte and he promises to watch over 
other Charlottes in other timelines. The world will forget her name, but Seth won't. Grey End. Eternal rest for God. So this ending proves that the umbrella, the reason the Umbrella Man has been watching over Charlotte is because Charlotte employed the Umbrella Man to do that, which is a little interesting. Withdrawing causes both Charlotte and Vincent to be chosen. The mind library is destroyed. It's full of photorealistic guts and innards. Charlotte wants to save everyone, but Freya says that she chooses everyone over him. And Charlotte explains that Freya is a manifestation of her destructive impulses, the embodiment of her and she could never love herself. Charlotte becomes the oracle and consumes everyone's ego, leaving her as the only person left. They then leave together to become stargazers. However, Charles earlier said that when people die, they become stargazers. So I think Charlotte is dead. White end, stargazer's journey. Charles appears, or the Umbrella Man, after all these endings. No matter what, Charlotte Wiltshire was doomed from the start. He asks if you'll be willing to give up your name to give Charlotte a good ending. After making your choice, he leaves, and the episode ends. There was never a good ending. From the beginning, Charles said you're on the path to the bad ending, and he was right. Now I know you have tons of questions. I had tons of questions. They are answers. These answers are located in the third and final game, Hello Charlotte, Episode 3, Childhood's End. This game is really fucking good. I'm not gonna lie, it's really good. Ethereum is so incredibly talented, I mentioned it before, I highly recommend you go play episode 3. If you do, go do it now, um, come back right after, it's the longest game, it is also the best. If you're not gonna go play it, I'm gonna break it down anyway, um, so either go play it now, come back, or just keep watching, um, but seriously, go, just go support Ethereum, it's, they're so talented, it's fucking crazy. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's move on to Hello Charlotte, episode 0. Bet you weren't expecting that. After the second game, I couldn't wait to see where this story goes next. So I immediately started playing the third game, and I was even more confused than I was after finishing the second game. Episode 3, strangely, opens with episode 0. I was immediately unsure what was going on, and I loved it. For starters, everything is different, but also every character is acting like the second game didn't even happen, so that must mean that it's a prequel? And I mean... No shit, it's episode zero. However, things don't seem to be right. The house is different yet again, and Aiden is a straight up monster. But the house being different is way stranger. Also, the Mad Cat's food bowl is gone. I don't think it's super important. I don't think it's super important, but I, I just noticed it. There's also a camera in the house. There's a lot of really strange things going on. If you enter the neighbor's house on the way to school, you'll find a dead Charlotte in the bed. And very strange. I'm sure it's a, I'm sure it's fine though. I'm sure it can't be that bad. Yet again on the way to school, Charlotte sees C. Charlotte sees C getting bullied, but this time she straight up ignores him being bullied and just keeps going. We also learn about something called the White Society, which definitely sounds like a cult. Like, that's like some midsummer shit. In school we found in school we find out Scarlet, 
the student president that died in the second episode is still alive and seems to talk to Charlotte a lot which is very different from episode 2 where Charlotte mentions never speaking to Scarlet at all. One of the strangest things about this world is Charlotte is really mean and a great example of this is how she's the one bullying Henry now, which is the complete opposite from episode 2. What's going on? C is in a new vessel, glad he's doing okay, and it turns out the White Society, which is definitely a cult, I can confirm that now, is actually run by Charlotte and their goal is to ascend. They do this by executing people during the execution hour. But before the hour, there's an incredible ad all about microbes. I love Execution Hour. It's so much fun. It's my favorite. There's nothing better than it. After the Execution Hour, this ends Chapter 1 of Episode 0. This is a long game. I'm not gonna lie. Not complaining though. In Chapter 2, Aiden is normal-ish. He's not a monster, but he doesn't make dresses anymore. Instead, he sews Charlotte's scalp into a hat. Which is great. Everyone, everyone in the house is extremely distant from Charlotte. For example, Huxley made a robot so he doesn't have to speak to Charlotte. Maybe the reason Charlotte is hated by the tenants is because she does things like delete all the files of Felix's laptop. We learn there's a new drug called Link, which when used allows you to connect your brain to another and them to you. There's a ton of side effects, which I never would have guessed with a drug that connects you to another person. Link overdose can cause your brain to melt. I also think Link could possibly be a metaphor for social media, but I'm not super sure about that, maybe. I decided not to break the TVs in the living room when given the choice. But then I regretted it because I was like, wanna know what happens when you break the TVs? And decided to reload my save file to see what would happen. Out of nowhere, Charlotte decides she doesn't want to break the TVs anymore. So it's immediately obvious that Charlotte is is aware of the player and when they reload save files. So can't really do that. At school now, Anri is the one buying food for Charlotte, and Charlotte is forcing her to skip class. Great friends. The outside of the school is kind of fucked up, there's been a lot of people unaliving themselves and the trees are full of people. It's not great, not gonna lie, I mean that's probably obvious but you know I just have to point that out just in case. Charlotte decides that her and her bully friends are gonna have a study day at Anri's house. Uh, Anri has a really bad housing situation. She lives in a tiny little room and in her brother's room we find a corpse sitting at a computer. Fun times. The game tells us his brain is melted. Charlotte thinks a lot about how everything in this world is a game. This is a running theme throughout each episode. She finds this situation amusing and how Anri is complex for an NPC. Anri says he's rotting in front of his monitor but her parents still fawn over him and expect big things from her. Anri has it kind of rough. I think it's, uh, it's pretty obvious but her brother is like a shut-in. He plays games all day. Um, and now he's nothing more than a corpse. Why he looks like a corpse is explained later. After this, it's execution time. Yippee! What is this? Dag and Romper? We get another incredible ad about how junk food will solve the world's problems. For today's execution, a boy is killed for sleeping with a teddy bear. And I mean, fair enough, grow the fuck up. Don't sleep with a teddy bear. Your vote on how he dies doesn't matter either. I love that. At this point, I kind of saw where this was, go where this was going. 
um, after seeing like how Anru was complex and the game's trying to make you feel sorry for her and then we get this execution time with a random person that you don't care so you're willing to see them die, I think we know who's going to get executed. Charlie gets knocked out and after she gets knocked out we get a countdown to the trial, 681 days left. And then we cut to another world, I think. I think this is another world because Henrietta Warhol, or Anri, is completely different. Anri is a mean perfectionist, fake, and she's collecting blackmail on girls who look like they're bullying the real Charlotte. It's not the real Charlotte, I wrote this down thinking that maybe it was, but it's not. 682 day days until the trial, the number went up. We're now playing as Charles, the boy with Anri taking photos of the of the girl I thought was Charlotte. Charles uses Charlotte's name and her picture for online chats. What the fuck is going on right now? Someone else uses C as their user. Anri also calls Charles out for writing fanfiction. Charles is Scarlet Isla's brother. He calls her the unborn sister soaked in womb blood. The one whom father told mother to kill. She tells him fucked up things. She's like this figment of his imagination that tells him fucked up things, and he keeps her away by taking pills. His mother is broken after losing her child. She doesn't see Charles, she calls him a good girl, cause all she can see is Scarlet. After this absolute insanity, like what the fuck was that? What world was this? Why are we following Charles? Scarlet Isla isn't, doesn't exist? So many questions, but then instead of getting any answers, we cut back to Charlotte. C finds her and she says she was forced to be linked. After after we learn that Aiden has also been brainwashed, chapter 2 ends. Chapter 3, episode 0. Bennett is addicted to soap and when he's sober, he's violent and aggressive. Um, yeah, I love Bennett. Soap addiction, not great. He like beats up Charlotte, it's not super cool, <laughs> not gonna lie. Charlotte meets Charles in the bathroom after Bennett messes her up, and she kills herself with a toothbrush and gets a new vessel, which explains why there was a dead body of Charlotte in the second room that we saw on the way to school in chapter one of episode zero. Because every time Charlotte gets messed up in this world, instead of like trying to heal or anything, she just kills herself and gets a new body. <laughs> Charlotte finds the tenants celebrating her death with a photo and everything. Charlotte talks about how her memories of finding Aiden and brainwashing him were fake and everyone in the house has always hated her. Felix is actually a creation by Dr. Huxley to replace him when he dies. There's a secret lab full of Felix clones. Today's wisdom machine said you are a murderer. Got to mention there is a wisdom machine on the way to school that you can put a coin in and get a little bit of wisdom from it. Apparently I'm a murderer. I mean, I don't know how they know, but they found out. Anri isn't coming to school anymore after what happened last chapter. Charlotte tells the class rep that Anri's her stalker. <sighs> This Charlotte is just the best, you know, she's so cool, she's so nice, she's such a bully, I love her, queen shit, all round, let her keep doing it. Charles is afraid of Scarlet, which makes sense as in the other world, Scarlet is the reason for all of Charles' pain and suffering. Charlotte treats the tens bad because if she doesn't, they'll ignore her fully. The moment she sees others have fun without her, she results to destructive behaviour. Again. I was excited for today's execution hour, but Charlotte pulled a fast one on me, and this time it's Anri getting killed. Surprise, surprise. I kind of told you this was going to happen, didn't I? The hour is ended by Scarlet killing Charlotte by stabbing her with a knife. 646 till days till the trial. Back in the other world, Charles and Anri go to see a movie together and get parfait. I didn't mention, but Charles and Anri have a fake relationship just to take photos and like keep up appearances, just reasons. Charles laments on their fake relationship, and Charles' friend C online tells Charles that he's going to die and wants Charles to be there. But Scarlet tells Ch Charles to study. There are no pills in the house. I think Charles's mother takes his pills for herself, and that's why he can't keep Scarlet at bay. This is confirmed later. Charles never has enough pills to keep away his 
visions or delusions. Back in the other world, Scarlet breaks Charlotte's legs and fucks her up. She then sends you the player and tells you she can show you the truth of this world by linking with Charlotte. C is the god of this world. I think this world is the fanfic he created using people from his own life? No. Charlotte decided to become pure white to prevent her from ever being tainted after she suffered horrendous bullying. Back to the other world. 625 days till the trial. Charles meets with C on the top of a roof. C is Vincent from episode 2, which further confirms C's actions in that game. Charles says how he made his story, he took Vincent's premise and twisted it to his liking, which might be why episode 2, C is Vincent, but in this, C is Charles. Charles takes off his glove and his hands are covered in cuts and bandages. He wants to help Vincent, but it's not his choice to make, he thinks. Vincent jumps. Charles falls back. He lives for his mother. He can't die before her. Scarlet appears, saying terrible things, even though he took the pills. Vincent is gone. Dead. Charles wanted to go with Vincent, but feels like it's not in his right. He can't leave his mother, his sick mother, who takes advantage of him. 531 days till the trial. Charles and Anri decide to run away after she says she's moving to another town. He also mentions how he's never met Anri's shut-in brother, and he could be a corpse for all he knows. This is really starting to cement the idea that Charlotte isn't real. All of these ideas, we've seen them in the other world, but this is the real world, or as real as we're gonna get in this game. In this world, everything that happens seems to affect Charlotte. What does it all mean? After going to a hotel room, Anri asks where they're gonna go next, and Charles offers her pills, a suicide pact. She loses it, crying and hitting him, asking why he would even suggest that. Anri loved Charles this whole time, and after realizing that, her face becomes that of a monster, just how Charles sees everyone else. Charles thought Anri was different. Charles thought Anri was like him. However, Anri was just like everyone else. And after realizing that, Charles' reality like distorts. He sees her different. He sees her not like Anri, but like everyone else. Vincent was also a writer. Vincent created a lot of different stories and Charles takes these stories and, you know, creates his own. He mentions how Vincent never he mentions how Vincent never finished Ether Almanac, which I think is a real thing created by Ethereum. I don't know what it is, but when I googled it, it possibly might be a real thing. I might have to look into that. Anru moves town, and a year and a half later, they stop talking. A happy ending, Charles says. There was nothing to be sad about. I didn't mention, but there are stories in between each of the chapters. And at first, I didn't understand what these stories were referencing. After reading this story though, I realised they were referencing the characters in the real world. Anri is the skin princess. She changes her skin to look the best every night ripping it off, but she didn't know that everyone who lived in the kingdom was blind. Anri was so focused on keeping up appearances, trying to look as normal as possible, even if it hurt her, and none of it mattered because no one in this world gives a shit about anyone else but themselves. They all think everyone's watching them, but everyone's blind in this kingdom. Just like the story of the skin princess. Charles doesn't want to admit that his mother is a parasitic existence in his life, slowly rotting away in her room. Charles vomits when interacting with other people. They look gross. There's something wrong with the people. Charles wants to join Vincent and be pure white and sterile. There are zero days until the trial. Charles wades through the black water and talks about how he's a bad protagonist. His story isn't about overcoming hardships, it's about giving up. Charles then sinks to the bottom of the ocean.
what the fuck was that? Charles's story is incredibly tragic. It's he's just a guy. He's a guy struggling with a mother that, you know, is a parasite on his life. He struggles with mental illness, loneliness. He sees everyone else in the world as monsters and he feels that anything he touches might die because he is just broken. He meets Vincent, who is the one person that he feels he can relate to, but Vincent isn't around for long. He laments on this fact later about how he never actually knew Vincent. Vincent was just someone he talked to online and he never took the chance to get to know Vincent personally because he was scared that if he knew Vincent, Vincent would stop being that person to look up to and would then stop being a god to him and just be another monster. Back in the other world, Scarlet is awakened by Charles who's younger and says they died and then this world was born after that. The world is collapsing and the reason for this is Charlotte. She's killing people and causing suicides. Charlotte despises interactive storytelling and doesn't want the puppeteer to play, which is why she stopped me from seeing other choices. The reason we're seeing these memories of the true realm, which is the real world, because Scarlet is linking with Charlotte and showing us what we thought were two separate things at two different times is actually happening at the same time. Every time Charlotte is knocked out, it's Scarlet link using the link drug to connect with her and show us, the player, the truth, the real story behind this world. All of this happened in the real world, not simultaneously, but before episode zero. I forgot to mention this, but Vincent talks about how when people die, they then create their own big bang, creating their own world that they are gods of. That's what happened here. When Charles goes, when Charles drowns in the ocean, this world was created. What is this world? Does this world link to episode one and two? The true realm isn't happening parallel to this story. It's already happened and we're seeing the aftermath of it. Charlotte awakens, tied up. The music goes so hard in this scene. It's so fucking good. The music is actually pretty good in this game, I'm not gonna lie. Charlotte then says she's gonna kill Charles for being against her. Charlotte has mentioned mother and now she mentions father who is probably Charles, maybe. Charlotte kills Scarlett and then addresses you, the player again, and says how she was aware of your existence this whole time and if you're just there to see what's happening and if you're watching the game get streamed and you're just there to see what's happening. And she mentions if you're watching this game get streamed then you really are the laziest type of person and I mean she said it, not me. Time for another execution hour. This time it's Scarlet Isla. The reason for everyone's pain. Charlotte minces Scarlet in a blender and makes her into a puppet. Charlotte falls down after this. The reason Charlotte was able to get the jump on Scarlet was she used her wish. After using her wish, she falls down and the story will now end. Charles explains that when a Charlotte uses her wish, their story ends. Just like how Charlotte wished in episode one to save the Oracle. That ended her story. How did episode two happen? Charlotte falls down. Charles picks her up and she dies in his arms. Then comes the Umbrella Man. He tells Charles to call him father. He says there's no way to bring her back. He could get a Vincent puppet, but those kill themselves. So there's nothing he can do. But no matter, there would be a waste for the story to end here. He's got more to show the player. Hello Charlotte, episode zero end. This whole thing was episode zero. This whole time, we've been following a different Charlotte. So now, it's time to save our Charlotte. The one we've been with from the beginning of this journey. This takes us back to the main menu. Starting a new game, immediately drops us into some fucked shit. <laughs> Charlotte tells Scarlet to go hide, and they're playing hide and seek. 
There are bodies everywhere, and blood and gore. I guess episode 2 really did still happen, even though it was a bad ending. I was wrong about that, not gonna lie. Look, I'm gonna be honest, I completely forgot to turn the light on. It's, uh, it was a little dark in here. Also, it's getting hot as fuck, and this jumper is killing me. So I gotta, I gotta wrap the, I gotta get a move on with this, because I, I can't keep the fan on and record at the same time, because... Apparently you can hear in the background, and that's fucked up. So, we take control of Scarlet as she takes an eye out of out of a Charlotte's corpse and heads to the first floor. Not noticing this is Charlotte's home, Scarlet meets Felix who treats her wounds. Scarlet mentions that she read a novel with that name in it. Interesting. Charlotte has murdered everyone on the second floor. I think this world is structured like floors, each being a different area, like school or Charlotte's home, or we'll see some more very soon. Felix promises to help Scarlett, but she can't leave. She then calls the puppeteer Lilith after her mother, because she has memories of the true realm. This seems to be a running theme with the Scarlets. They all have memories of the true realm, which they get from Charles. So it's Charles's memories, because in the true realm, Scarlet never existed. Charlotte told Scarlet, their names are very similar, to find her where mother is, whatever that means. Charlotte grew appendages and had a tumor growing on her apparently. Felix knows something about this and talks and takes Scarlet to explain. He takes her to a container filled with rotting organic matter infested with a parasite that they had extracted out of Charlotte. It can manipulate time and space and Felix calls this parasite the Oracle, which means the Oracle was never a god. They were nothing more than a parasite infecting Charlotte. Scarlet decides to infect herself with the Oracle in order to beat Charlotte. Felix is like, yeah, sure bro, I can do that for you. I don't really give a shit about your well-being. So Felix operates on Scarlet, inserting the parasite into her brain, and inside Scarlet meets the Oracle, who of course, looks like Charlotte. The Oracle wonders why Scarlet needs to find Charlotte, and why she trusts the puppeteer. They could be on Charlotte's side, or just curious as to what's going on. I mean, yeah, I'm on, I'm on Charlotte's side, I mean. She's the one I've been following for the entire game, you know? I, I hope her life works out well. Scarlet's body is rejecting the parasite, so she doesn't have long to live after getting it put inside of her. With her life on the line, Scarlet works with the tenants to find Charlotte by searching the floors for anomalies. Charlotte has been detected on multiple floors, and we have to check all of them. The 11th floor is the point of no return and nobody comes back. Scarlet asks if we could just head to the 11th floor, but Felix is like, no, because then there wouldn't be a game to play. And honestly, I respect, I respect that. That's good writing. I actually, I actually, I actually really like that. It's, it's something about it, it's kind of fun. So the next day, we head up to the fourth floor. Scarlet almost dies in a language sea and gets infected with something else. She can now understand the locals inside the village. There's an art expedition on Charles Isla and his mental state. The art in this room is actually really sick and I fucking love it. The villagers all praise some sort of prism. Don't know what that's about. It's um. After completing the puzzles, we reach the word sea. After being pulled through a whirlpool, we find what happened to the villagers. In the village, a lot of villagers went missing and this is where they are. They have merged into a cluster and a terrifying idea is presented. There are multiple Charlottes in the house. There is nothing we can do to help these people, so Scarlet leaves. The word people purely exist to be used by the speakers, no matter how they are used. The next day, we head to the sixth floor, laboratories. Here we try not to die in the puzzles and Florence talks about the planet she came from. It's the same one as Bennett, and they were both saved by Dr. Huxley. Dr. Huxley be saving all the Undermen. All the Overmen? One or the other. I forgot. She was a test subject in the prosthetic department where they would detach and attach her limbs over and over again. In the center of the laboratories is a corpse with all its guts hanging out surrounded by dead mag cats and people. It's called the Oracle Project. The corpse belongs to Charlotte. She's still alive, so she's not a corpse, but she doesn't look great. They're keeping her alive for the sake of the TV world, which might be the same TV world we traverse in episode one, maybe, or a similar one. Scarlet wants to help this Charlotte, but there's nothing she can do without killing her, so they leave. Time to go home. The Oracle torments Scarlet in her dreams, and when she wakes, her condition is a lot worse. Time is running out for Scarlet. She has to find Charlotte very soon, or all of this will be for nothing. Today we travel with Bennett. Yippee! I love that little soap junkie. He's my favorite. 
Ninth, ninth floor is a landfill. This floor is huge. This floor has a lot of puzzles. You go through like an escape room. It's um, it was actually pretty fun. It was I am really pissed because I managed to get through it, but I accidentally clicked on the um the Felix help button, which I'm really mad about because I didn't get the achievement. I didn't need help, but Felix helped me, and then I was like, fuck. Now I don't get the achievement. Anyway, also, it's really hard to start a new game in this. You're gonna find out why. <laughs> this floor has a huge Charlotte. Like, she's really big. Bennett says how there's thousands of heat sources inside of her. Perhaps this world was dying, so she took all the inhabitants to survive inside her own body. It's really quite the sacrifice. The running theme in this is there's nothing Scarlet can do. All of these worlds are long dead. Scarlet is too late to help. Scarlet can't do anything at this point. The only thing Scarlet can do is find her Charlot. There's this kind of aura of help hopelessness and nothing you do matters. Nothing you do will have any effect on the outcome. I love that. It's so good. After heading back, the Oracle visits Scarlet again and says how all will end and all will begin soon. That's that's a cool fucking line. I love that. After waking up, Scarlet finds Mr. Honker, Honkyo Felix dead in a body bag. We knew it was coming. He was nothing more than a clone this whole time and someone has probably come to replace him. So Benna forces Scarlet to the elevator and hits floor 11. But before seeing what that entitles, we get a transmission from Q84, who is the Charlotte from episode zero. Is she alive? How is she alive? She made her wish, her story ended. Q84 has been moved to a defective Charlotte vessel, but why? Because Charles needs her help with something and he states, that they're on the 11th floor. She asks what happened to the Vincent vessel, and Charles says he left it alone for a bit, and when he came back, it was dead. He states they always do that. They head to Charles' dad's room. Inside, there is a TV set. Back to Scarlet, she finally finds Charlotte. Charlotte has found mother, and it's definitely something. The true God that controls everything in the house. Scarlet Real saying she's supposed to be kind, beautiful, and understanding. Mother is a monster. Charlotte states that the truth of the house is the entire world is an entertainment arena. Mother generates scenarios and a constant supply of protagonists. When one dies, all she has to do is spawn more Charlottes to amuse the spectators. Each 20th Charlotte is defective. No one needs saving, because they're all actors. Scarlet starts to change mentally. Instead of understanding and talking to Charlotte, which she wanted to do, she now wants to kill her and tackles her to the ground, choking her. Charlotte tells her to remember there's not just one person behind the screen. There's thousands. She says how this is a game for the puppeteers. She says she's nothing more than a Charlotte to create entertainment. Abused to create an emotional response from the audience. Entertainment is dead. It's just one big circle jerk between consumers and producers. In order to be loved, you cannot make mistakes. Scarlet kills Charlotte. After doing this, Scarlet is upset because she didn't come here to kill Charlotte. She came here to understand her and understand why she did what she did. In order to understand Charlotte, she transfers her consciousness into a Charlotte vessel to learn the truth. This whole time, we've been following Scarlet. Again, this game has pulled a fast one. That wasn't what happened next. This wasn't episode three. This was another prequel. This happened before 1 and 2. The yellow ribbon has been the only thing differentiating her from the others. I didn't notice it. I don't know if you noticed it. If you look at every Charlotte we've played as, episode 1 and 2 has a yellow ribbon. You've probably noticed that. I definitely noticed it. But then I didn't notice that episode 0 Charlotte doesn't have it. No other Charlotte has the yellow ribbon. Charles was the one that helped her in the TV world in episode one. Scarlet didn't believe the tenants existed, so that's why they were imaginary in her story. Her and the Oracle made a channel to live in. Her story was supposed to end after episode one when she wished to save the Oracle because she was obsessed with the trial it manifested in her world in episode two. The reason Vincent was called C was because it was Charles in a Vincent vessel. The person using Charles was Umbrella Man which is why he looks like Charlotte's father and 
Charles' father. When Charlotte said, you look like my father, it's because it's Scarlet, Charles' sister. This whole time, the Oracle was on our side. I thought they were bad. I thought they were out to get us. They've been there since Scarlet made Felix put them in. We now get a choice. Umbrella Man promises that if we break the TV, we will free Scarlet from this trap that she's in. Inside the room that Charles and Q84 enter, there is a TV. And on that TV is the ending of episode two. Which ending? It doesn't really matter. All endings are located on this TV. This TV is what's left of Scarlet. She was originally a part of the house, but after episode one, she made her wish and her story ended. But to save her, the Oracle created a channel just for them. A TV inside the house. Where they could continue living. And that's where episode 2 takes place. Now we see that they're trapped in this TV. Can't get out, they're forced to live this nightmarish ending to episode 2. If you change the channel, it annoys Umbrella Man, who is disappointed in how selfish we are. He leaves, saying that he'll see us when we reload the save. Q84 changes the channel to Scarlet sitting on a couch eating chips. Annoyed with this ending, she changes the channel again to her hanging, and again to her dead, and again until Charles stops her. They talk about how there is no good ending. The house is inherently self-destructive, and they decide to go eat junk food themselves. The game ends with, in a room, there is a box. Charlotte restarts the White Society, and Freya and Charlotte slash Scarlet leave. But it's all glitched and fucked up, and the main title is really messed up. Also, at this point, do not try and start a new game. Really, really bad idea to start a new game. I would not recommend it. Trust me on that. So instead of pressing new game, because that's terrifying and I hated that, I reloaded the save and then I chose to destroy the TV, which gives a very different ending. Charlotte and Charles bury Vincent in the pit which is a massive hole at the bottom of the house. A a endless hole, possibly. Ch uh, Charles has thrown many of Vincent's in here. They then go to see Mother. Charles says how Charlotte was wrong. The house doesn't solely exist for entertainment. That's because that's the only way Charles could connect with people, was through stories. However, he can't make a spectacular end. He can only come to terms with the loss of his loved ones. Losing Scarlet to father's decision, losing mother to mental illness, losing Vincent to delusions, losing Henry to distance. He tells mother she's done enough and injects her with the contents of a syringe. The house begins to collapse. There will be no more stories. No more restrictions. No more fate. No more endings. After the world crumbles, Umbrella Man appears to congratulate us on reaching the end before he glitches and is replaced by Charles, for the first time speaking directly to us. He apologises for the ending. After all, he couldn't become Charlotte Wilshire or Scarlet Isla. Even though there wasn't even that much fun gameplay, we stuck around till the end. Through illusions and metaphors, fairy tales and delusions, we were able to have a conversation. And finally, we see Charlotte, from the beginning. She says how everything worked out, and she hasn't forgotten us, even though we made that deal with the Umbrella Man. She says that a new day is always coming, and with that, the game ends. That is the ending 
to Hello Charlotte, a pretty incredible trilogy. I fucking loved it. But with the ending, we now have all the pieces to put together and fully explain the story of Hello Charlotte, which is a simple story wrapped up inside a incredibly incredibly complex one. So let's let's break it down from the beginning to the end. The entire story of Hello Charlotte. In the beginning, there is the true realm, and the true realm is the closest thing we have to our own world. In this world lives Charles, a boy who lives with his sick mother. His father is out of the picture, but before he left, he forced Charles's mother to have an abortion, preventing her from having Scarlet, the daughter she always wanted. Scarlet haunts Charles. He sees her as the reason for all his problems. This manifests into Scarlet that berates him and tells him how worthless he is, because that's all he sees himself as. He takes the pills to keep her at bay, but he never has enough pills, because his mother convinced him to share with her to help her get out of bed. In this world, Charles only has two friends. Anri, his fake girlfriend, who has a family that doesn't care about her and only cares about her shut-in brother, but still has high expectations for her and forces her to try and live up. She's a girl so caught up with what other people think about her and her appearance online that she can't see the simple fact that nobody actually cares. Charles' other friend is Vincent, an online friend who suffers from depression and delusions, a person that Charles never fully knows but romanticizes in his stories to the point where Vincent is nothing but an empty shell. Charles writes stories about a girl called Charlotte Wilshire. These stories are very similar to the stories Vincent writes, we're told. Writing stories is the only way Charles can connect with the people around him. This is until Vincent tells Charles it's time for them to pass on. Vincent says how when people die, their essence spreads, creating a whole new world they're gods of. Charles doesn't ask Vincent to live. They hold hands as Vincent jumps off the building. This, cause, this causes Charles to break down, seeing Charlotte e even though he took the pills. Charles can't die because he can't let his mother go. She needs him, even if she doesn't see him. Anri then moves away and after a few years they lose contact. After this, with no one left but Scarlet, Charles makes a choice. Now this is my first question. I think it's implied that Charles kills himself, but it could also be metaphorical and just serve as like, they died on the inside? or they're currently dying and everything that happens in the game happens inside their head as they like come to terms with their life. But I'm just gonna say for the sake of this, this is where Charles dies. And which means that Vincent's theory about creating new worlds is correct, but I'm not gonna go into that because that's, I, I don't really have the evidence. If you know, let me know, that'd be great. I'm just gonna say Charles dies here, drowned in the ocean. This creates Charles's own world that he is God of, the house. The house is separated by floors, each floor being a different world and its own story. On one of these floors is a world which Charlotte Wilshire kills everyone in, in the school except for Scarlet, who asks the player for help to find this Charlotte and understand her. Scarlet also puts the Oracle, which is nothing more than a parasite, into her head and they work together. She travels through the house with the help of the tenants in search of Charlotte and the truth of this world. Along the way, she discovers dying and long dead worlds, all with different outcomes in different Charlottes. Scarlet starts to change, from the mean, selfish idea of her in the true realm to a real human being, with friends and sympathy for others, but still always a skeptic. On floor 11, she encounters the Charlotte she's looking for and meets Mother, the true god of the house. She learns the house is nothing more than a story device. Mother creates scenarios and puts protagonists in them for the audience watching at home. This Charlotte then makes her wish. When a Charlotte makes their wish, their story ends. And this Charlotte wishes that Scarlet will get the chance to understand her and learn. Scarlet's personality then shifts and she kills the Charlotte she wanted to talk to. And not understanding what happened, she asks the Oracle to transfer her into a Charlotte vessel, in turn giving her her own story. Hello Charlotte Episode 1 is the simple story of a girl's trip through the TV realm with Felix. And again, she saves the Oracle. But to do so, she makes a wish to Mother, ending her story. But to save her, the Oracle creates one more channel, one more world in a small area in the house now sits a TV. On that TV is Charlotte slash Scarlet. A story continuing. 
Hello Charlotte episode 2 is probably still the most traumatic episode. Scarlet in the true realm was so focused on the trial that it manifested in her own world. And because she was such a skeptic, the tenants in her world were imaginary because she didn't believe in them. In this episode, C was actually Charles. He entered Scarlet's world to see if she had really changed and she learnt and he learned she had. She was kind, compassionate, and good to everyone, even though she was treated terribly in this world. Ironically, the Scarlet so focused on Charles passing the trial, failed it herself, leaving her world in complete ruin. Sometime, sometime, either during this or before, there was another Charlotte in her own story. All Charlottes learn the truth of the world and all act differently according to it. This Charlotte turned into a bully, treating everyone around her terribly because nothing mattered. The world wasn't real, it was merely for another's entertainment. This Charlotte was Charles's. This was the real Charlotte. Q84. She treated it like a game of executing people and messing with Anne. Throughout the week, she has shown Charles's memories of the true realm by Scarlet, which ends with her executing Scarlet and Charlotte making her wish. She then dies, and, and Charles, unsure what to do, meets Umbrella Man, who is actually his manifestation of his own father, another god of this world. For Charles is the god of this world. His parents have such a hold over him that even he isn't the true god of this world. That's reserved for his mother and father. Even in death, he couldn't escape his mother's grip over him. After Charles brings Q84 back to life, he says he needs her help with one last thing. So they head to his father's room, and all that's there is a little CRT TV, and he explains that this is where Charlotte has been the entire time, and explains everything I told you just before. Umbrella Man gives you a choice. Both endings are fair and valid, but I think the true ending is smashing the TV and freeing her. As we see the aftermath of what happened, we get the credits, we get a thank you from Ethereum, and we get like, actual ending stuff. Charles buries another Vincent's body and explains how he never saw Vincent as a person, just as something more, something different, only because he never got to know Vincent. Then finally Charles faces Mother, the god of this world, but only because Charles lets her. He sees his sick mother as more important than himself and the god of this world, so now after facing the loss of his friends and the perfect sister that never was, he and his creation Charlotte say goodbye to his mother, killing her and destroying the house in the process, ending this world and this story because all along, this was Charles's story. Even if he was just relegated to a side character, a story about loss and dealing with it, loneliness, mental health, and so much more, it all ends with Charlotte thanking the player and telling you no matter what you're going through, there's always a new day coming. And that, is the Hello Charlotte trilogy. Actually, so fucking good. Full of metaphors, insanity, death, and so many Charlottes. All the Charlottes are there. This series was incredible to play. Ethereum did an amazing job. Go support them. I had so much fun playing this game. Um, if you like this video, I don't know, do whatever you want, I don't care. Just let me know if you want me to possibly play their spin-off. Tempted to. I haven't played it yet just because this was so good and I kind of I love it. Thank you for sticking to the end of this video. I'm planning on making more. I want to do more long stuff like this. So I think it's going to take a while till I make a new video. But um, thank you for sticking with this. It was so much fun to make. It took me ages and thank you.